morning. My name is Renee, and I am a member of Galilee Baptist Church, and I would like to introduce you all to Pastor Pope and Mr. Gloria, and welcome to Galilee Baptist Church. Amen. We praise God for each and every one of you joining us on the worship hour today. In the days and times that we live in, you know, we need to stay close to God because we have a lot of trouble in life, yes. but God is able to deliver us from all of our trouble. Amen. He did say he's our present help in time of trouble. Amen. Amen. So we're just going to have to stand and fight. Amen. So come on, everybody. Let's, Let's go, go to church.
heavens nor in the earth. You might look high, you might look low, but I want you to know you're never going to find anybody like our God. Amen? Amen. 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 If you believe that, come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> you know, challenges just serve to make us stronger. And if we accept the challenge that is before us and don't try to fight so hard against it, We'll find that everything is going to be all right. Amen. Amen. When we came to church on yesterday, we said, oh, my goodness. All of our sound has gone out. The lightning must have done something the other night. Mm -hmm. Had an idea, said, well, we can fix it this way. That didn't work. We tried a second way. That didn't work. We tried a third way. I even woke up this morning. I sent Rashad a note. I said, we can do it like this. And that didn't work. <laughs> but in spite of it all, yeah. I heard the church praising God. This yeah. Morning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In spite of it all, yeah. the spirit of the Lord still yeah. showed up. What God wants us to do is to remember that whenever a challenge comes to us, we don't have to we don't have to just fall down and start crying and kicking, and giving up and saying there's no need to continue on. Come on now. What we need to do as believers in Christ is we need to make sure that we stand up and fight. Come on stand up and fight. Because God is still on our side. Yeah. And he will always be on our side. Yeah. So I want you to open up your Bibles, if you would, to the book of 1 Peter. All the way almost to the end of the New Testament. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. 1 Peter chapter 5. Verses 8 and 9. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Hallelujah. We will stand in reverence to the reading of the word of God. If you have it, would you signify by saying amen? Amen. If you need me to hold on, say, wait a minute, preacher. Amen. I heard one hold on. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to read to you this morning from the New King James Version. And the Bible says, be sober. That means be aware, everybody. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, yes. seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. Resist him steadfast in the faith, yes, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Mm -hmm. yes. Be sober. Uh -huh. Be vigilant. Yes. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. I'd like to speak with you from that topic. Stand up and fight. Fight something. Stand up and fight. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of your son Jesus to give you all the glory, the honor, and all the praise this morning. And we want to thank you for everything you've done and everything that you're doing right now. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for helping us to press on yes. in spite of all the difficulties. Pressing on, yes. Lord God, yes. in the name of Jesus. Pressing on, Pressing on that we might glorify and magnify you. Yes. We love you. Yes. We bless you and we pray. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> you know, I, I heard Minister Gloria say that we cannot hide behind the microphone today. So as the church, we have to stand up 
and say something. Yeah. Well, I want to tell you that there's a lot of times that we cannot behind, hide behind uh -huh. our religiosity. We cannot behind our so-called profession of faith. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Every now and then, we got to stand up uh -huh. fight and fight for the Lord. Amen. Uh -huh. You know, when Peter is writing this passage, uh -huh. uh, go back to English class. Oh, okay. He uses a simile. Uh -huh. And in the simile, he says that the devil like a roaring lion. Yeah. Like uh -huh. a roaring lion. He's doing a comparison with a simile like a roaring lion. And in that simile, he begins to talk about some of the tricks and the characteristics that the devil will use in order to try to drag us down. Come on down. Like uh -huh. a roaring lion. Uh -huh. See, saints, what Peter is letting us know is that the enemy, the adversary, the devil, is active, and what he wants to do is destroy everything and everyone that belongs to God. But as believers, we have to stand up and fight. Come on. Yeah. Because the lion is busy. Mm -hmm. I took a few moments and I was reading a few articles this week about the, the, the erosion of Christian uh, privileges. Mm. I read an article about a woman who was standing on the side of a building mm -hmm. in England. And as she was standing on the side of the building in Birmingham, she was bowed her head and she was just praying silently. And the police came and arrested her for praying silently. <coughs> because she was praying silently in her mind in a censorship zone. But this wasn't the only woman. There were other women who were in other places in England who were either fined or arrested for silently praying in these censorship zones. And I know that some of you might be saying, well, you know, that's overseas, so, you know, what can we expect? That kind of stuff doesn't happen here in the United States of America. But I want to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that Satan is busy, just as busy here as he is in other places around the world. Look at the news reports, and there's a news report about a football coach in Washington, D.C. that was fined or fired because he said a prayer on the field at the end of the game. Game is over. And he prayed, so, so, the, so they placed him on leave. Oh a teacher in New Jersey is suspended for giving a student a Bible. Mm -hmm. But we not only have these things, if you look in the political realm, there have been, there have been moves to take the words under God mm -hmm. out of the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh. See, there are many people who are trying to remove all traces of God. The adversary, the devil, Come on. is destructive. Come on. He's like a roaring lion uh -huh. out to seek whom he may devour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just as he is destructive and, and, and busy, as believers, we got to stand up and fight. Uh -huh. If we don't want to fall prey to the enemy's destructive works. Right. See, as believers, we got to know how to fight. Mm -hmm. We got to know how to fight. You don't just go out and just fight on any kind of way. Right. Mm -hmm. If we're going to fight, we can fight by being focused on God's mission. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can fight by being determined to carry out the plan to defeat the enemy. Yeah. You know, the devil could have made us all downhearted and downtrodden because the sound wasn't working Come today. On. Come on. But God's people said, not so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's people yeah. said, not, not so. so. Yeah. 
We are determined yeah. that we are going to carry out God's plan yeah. to defeat yeah. the enemy. We are going to fight. Uh -huh. We are going to remain yeah. steadfast. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to remain yeah. unmoved. Yeah. Yeah. Always abounding yeah. in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know that our labor is not in vain. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to stand up and fight. God's grace is sufficient. It yeah. is sufficient. We are the buffer of light yes. that keeps darkness from overtaking this world. Yes. And as we are the buffer of light, we are on a mission. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we stay focused on God's mission. Come Somebody on. say God's mission. God's, God's mission. mission. Not mine. Not mine. Not mine. But, God's mission. but God's mission. I want to tell you something, saints, that Satan is that lion that is out to destroy the flock of God. Yeah. Come on, sir. Come on. And that lion has a, a, a greedy and a violent appetite. Come on now. See, the enemy, when he attacks, he's not just planning to look you in the face and give you a nice long lick with his tongue up beside your face. Come on, sir. No, the enemy is out to destroy you. The enemy is out to kill you. And the enemy is out to consume you in come any on. way that he can. Come on, come on. See, when the lion is out and about, the lion wants to hide in the grasses. And as the lion is hiding in the grasses, he's trying to conceal his presence until he sees the right moment to attack. Satan works just like that lion. He works just like that lion because the Satan, what he does is he tries to hide the danger associated with the sin that he wants to get you to commit. He tries to hide the danger. He wants to make you think it's all right. How many of you have seen the, the video clips of dumb criminals? There's a lot of videos out there of dumb criminals. Yes. I read a story about two criminals who decided to steal some money from some gambling machine. Come on, sir. <laughs> but why? But these dumb criminals, while they were stealing the money, they decided to video themselves. <laughs> Everybody wants their 15 minutes of fame on Facebook. <laughs> they want to TikTok their way to prison. <laughs> Because those dumb criminals film themselves, the cops got a hold of the film, and guess what? They know who stole the money. Those dumb criminals didn't count the costs or the consequences of their actions. You know, saints, whenever we fall into Satan's trap, we're often surprised at how serious the consequences are for indulging in sin. We got, we well, don't, well, don't think about the consequences. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to do this. And the enemy says, it'll be all right. Don't TikTok your way into hell. Hallelujah. Don't be a dumb criminal. Stay focused on your, on God's mission uh -huh. and not only on your mission. Come on, Amen. come on. See, what God wants us to do is to make sure that everything that we do in this world glorifies him. Yeah. That's his mission. He wants us to glorify yeah. him. He wants us to lift up his name. Yeah. He wants us to praise him. Yeah. He wants us to worship him. Yeah. He wants us to to be sober. Yes. He wants us to be vigilant. Yeah. He wants us out there telling those folks who are about to be dumb criminals, watch out! Uh -huh. There's danger ahead. Watch out! Uh -huh. danger. There's a lion that's out there that's trying to kill you yeah. and his name is Satan. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, uh -huh. we're on a mission. We're trying to deny Satan his prey. Come on. We're on a mission. And I'm so glad that God has put us on a mission. Yes. See, our God looked down through the curtain of time uh -huh. and he set us in place for a purpose. Yes. 
I want to tell everybody in here that it's not an accident that you showed up in Galilee right, on yeah. June the 11th or June the 11th. 2023. It's not an act, act, act accident that you are here. Come on, sir. God has placed you here uh -huh. for a purpose. Yes. God has placed you here so that we all can be better equipped yes. to fight the good fight of faith. Yes. God has placed us here so that we can get stronger and exercise the gifts that God has placed down on the inside of us so that we can glorify his name so that we can lift up the kingdom of the living God here. It's time for us to fight. It's time for us to fight. But the devil, the devil like sin is lying at the door. And the devil is waiting on us to slip up. The devil is is waiting to, to overtake us. The devil wants to come on in. And I got to tell you what, the first place that the devil is going to attack you, whenever he tries to attack you, is in your mind. He's going to try to attack you in your mind. Because the enemy knows that if he can distort our thinking about the seriousness of sin, if he can make us think it won't be that bad, it's not just so uh, 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 so bad that God won't forgive it. It won't be that way. That is how he hides in the weeds. Yeah. He gets ready to attack you. But God says that we're going to be soldiers. Uh -huh. yeah. In the army of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to be good souls. Yeah. In the army of the Lord. Yeah. It's time for us to armor up. Yeah. I heard them talking in vacation Bible school. They got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Yeah. They got to shod their feet with the gospel of peace. Yeah. They got to put on the helmet of salvation. Yeah. They got to put up the shield of faith. Yeah. They got to take up the sword of the spirit. It's time for us to put on the belt of truth. It's time for us to armor up so that we can resist the fire and dark so that we can know the truth in the face of the lies that the devil tries to persuade us with. We're focused. We're focused on God's mission. And as we're focused on God's mission and we're armored up, we're ready to go in the battle. I want to know is anybody ready to fight for the Lord? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We got to fight. We got to fight because I want to tell you that roaring lion is vicious. And if we're going to fight, we have to have that plan. We have to plan to defeat the enemy. Come on. Don't go running up on the devil without a plan. Don't go running up on the devil without a plan. Don't go running up on, the devil without a plan. Go running up on it because you'll you'll find that that, that, that you're going to be uh, you're going to be in trouble because the devil has a plan. See, when the devil gets ready to fight, it's like that roaring lion. Like that roaring lion. I say, like that roaring lion. When that roaring lion gets out there, that lion hides in the bush until it's time to attack. He's disciplined until it's time to attack. And that roaring lion will come out of the bush and he will chase the herd. And the herd is running where they think to safety, but they don't know that roaring lion is leading them to yeah. another pack of lions yeah. that is hiding yeah, yeah. in the bush and ready to ambush them. But you know that other pack of lions, they got to be disciplined too. Come on, come on. They're not going to jump out. They're not going to jump out until they know that they can, can that they can. Uh, uh, attack the herd and be successful Come on. in their attack. Come on. See, saints, our enemy, the devil tries to deceive us. Yeah. Right. He tries to catch the believer off guard. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to be disciplined. Yeah. Peter said we got to be sober and vigilant. Yeah. Because the, the enemy is going to do everything in his power to push us off the path of righteousness. Yeah. I said he's going to try to push you off the path of righteousness. Yeah.
The Bible lets us know in 1 John 2 and 16 that some of the tactics the enemy uses to push us off the path of righteousness are the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We all like physical pleasure. And sometimes the enemy will take that physical pleasure to the extreme and make us want to engage in sexual sin. Come on. Make us want to engage in gossip. Come on. Make us want to engage in violence and, and drug use and alcohol abuse and even hurting ourselves. Come on, sir. The lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. The lust of the eyes and that temptation to look and desire after something that doesn't belong to you. One of the greatest <laughs> examples of the fall caused by the lust of the eyes is when David was standing on his rooftop. And as he looked down off of his rooftop, he saw a woman named Bathsheba. And she was on an adjacent rooftop. And he saw Bathsheba and she was over there bathing and the lust of the, the eyes got the best of David. And, and David said, I just got to have her. The problem was Bathsheba didn't belong to him. Bathsheba was, was somebody else's wife. And, and what he saw led him to sin. He didn't have to give in to the sin, but he went on with the lust of the eye. My brothers and my sisters, the devil will also use the pride of life. And that pride of life causes us to act like Satan mm -hmm. and desire to get credit for the things that we didn't do. You know that word plagiarism. Yeah. Yeah. We like to write stuff and put our name on it and it wasn't even ours. We like to take credit for other folks' work. We do that all the time. It ain't just in writing. You know how it is. There's a big project going on at the church. You came up and talked about all the great stuff that you did and know that you were at home sleep the whole time. You made all the things. Hallelujah. But yet, let you tell it. Let you tell it. You not only planned it, you executed it, you cleaned up, you did everything. You didn't pick no weeds. You didn't pick no weeds. You didn't pick no weeds. But if you tell it, you got a whole bag full. Two, three bags full. Amen. 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 Every one of those temptations, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life calls us to focus on ourselves. In all of those situations, we are the central focus. Those Temptations are, are rooted in pride and they're rooted in selfishness, which are sins before God. But yet, that's what the devil wants to use. Yeah. He wants to use that to cause us to lose our focus on our mission. But we got to stay disciplined, y'all. Yeah. We got to stay disciplined. We got to work for the glory of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. We got to do what God has called us to do. Yeah. See, we got to work and we do have to be steadfast. We have to have a plan. We got to be disciplined for the Lord. Yeah. Yes, sir. God has laid out the blueprint. Uh -huh. And here's the blueprint right here. We got the plan on how we're going to defeat the devil. Yeah. Right. All we have to do is walk the walk and talk the talk. You know, in, in, in Sunday school this morning, I was talking to one of my buddies, Brother Tyson over there. Uh -huh. <laughs> Brother Tyson was my bodyguard. And I said, Brother Tyson, if you my bodyguard and you said don't go over there until I can go check the situation out and I go over there, before you get there, What's going to happen? He said, I can't protect you. <laughs> I can't protect you. Did, you didn't follow the plan. Come on. How many times has God given us the plan and we not followed God's plan? And then when we don't follow God's plan, the first thing we say is, where are you, God? Why did you leave me alone, God? You know I need you, God. Why come you didn't help me? He didn't help me because you didn't follow the plan. 
Brother Tyson, I got to tell you a second. <laughs> Come on. I heard it. I heard it. I said, Brother Tyson, uh-huh. what happens if I do this about 22 or 30 times? I don't follow the plan. Uh-huh. Tyson said, I'm going to cut you loose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you won't. You won't. You won't listen. You won't listen. You won't, you won't follow the plan. When I cut you loose, you on your own. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something, saints. You want to do what you want to do. God says, I'll take my hand off of you and let you do what you want to do because you won't follow the plan. But when you're out there all by yourself and the devil's beating you up from head to toe. Okay, Tyson, I got to tell the third. <laughs> I said, Tyson, when I make up my mind that I'm going to follow the plan, I'm going to come back. Tyson, can I come back? Tyson said, I don't want nothing to do with you. <laughs> I said, Tyson, won't you take me back, man? He said, I ain't, I ain't messing with you. You won't follow the plan. I want to tell you something, saints. Man might leave you alone, but you can always go back to God. Because the God that you serve has not given you a spirit of 
you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. See, the devil wants to destroy everything. I want you to stand up. Fight something. I want you to stand up. Everybody stand up. I want you to get this illustration in your head. I want you to spread your arms out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might have to put them up. You might have to put them down. But everybody spread your arms out. See, that while the devil's trying to take stuff away from you, God says, I'm enlarging your territory. God says, I'm going to give you more. Stretch yourself. In the midst of trials, stretch yourself. In the midst of tribulation, stretch yourself. God says, the devil might be trying to take it away from you, but I'm going to enlarge your territory. Why? Because you got your mind stayed on me. Why?
Amen. You know, we need to make a stand. Yeah. Because in the days and the times that we live in, the Bible is true. Yeah. The devil is like walking about like a roaring lion, yeah. seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I love what you said, Pastor, in that we have to make sure that we understand that this is God's mission. Amen. And this is not our mission. We are available for God to use us. And in using us, we have to stand and allow God to fight through us. Amen. And we have to know that when we go into this battle, we have been given a blueprint. We've got a plan. Amen. Genesis to Revelation. Read the blueprint, and we will be successful in what God wants us to do. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we just want to thank you for joining us for the worship hour. And we pray that you are safe. But if not, we pray that you will give your lives to the Lord on this very day and watch God fight for you. Amen. We ask that if you're ever here in San Angelo, you drop by 721 West 19th Street. And join us for our Wednesday night Bible study at 6 15 p.m. What is our Sunday school? At 9 o'clock a.m. On Sunday. Every Sunday morning. <laughs> and what time do we start our worship service? At 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. We would love to have the opportunity to love on you. So we pray that God will keep you and God will bless you. That is our prayer. Amen. Join us again next week. Have a very blessed day. God bless you.